Okay. Here's my next question for you. A lot of reports coming out this offseason uh, that Trey Lance has improved. Mm -hmm. We've heard it from Kyle Shanahan. We've heard it from Debo. We've heard it from George Kittle. In each case, they've said he's a lot better. Uh, George Kittle said he seems more confident, more joyous on the field. So there's been like varying levels of specificity, but it's coming from people who are fairly close to the matter. Um, on the other hand, you know, they, ha they don't have to tell the truth. It's in their interest to pump the kid up. What do you think? How much stock do you put into all this? That he's better? Yeah. How much stock do you put into it? A ton. There's no doubt he's better. There's no doubt in so. my mind. I mean, we've better. seen it, right? We, you and I have seen I've, it. I've definitely seen him improve. Yeah. But ultimately, what it really comes down to is just all of the variables, all of the different. I mean, you're you, you've checked out um, quarterbacks on Netflix, right? You've been watching that at all? Have you seen that? I haven't watched all? it yet. I haven't seen it yet. Well, no. it's really awesome, Grant. You're gonna love it. And it's basically okay. just a it's just a deep dive on the quarterbacks, and you get a some glimpses into real life quarterbacking in the NFL, the physical pains, the, the intricacies, the, all the different terminology, blah, blah, blah. You know, the, the just the simplest, the simple task of calling a singular play in the NFL is sometimes 23, 25 words long. So it's just vast. And when you're talking about Kyle Shanahan's offensive playbook, it's more vast than others. So, I mean, there's a, even if Trey was super experienced, you would have he would have a learning curve in this offense. Now you take a quarterback who's super raw and you have this vast offense, it's going to take some time. And I think now that you're going to see him get his arms all the way around what he's being asked to do in every phase of the game, from setting the protections to going through his progressions to his mechanics to his throwing, I think you're going to see a guy that is mentally freed up to just get out there and compete. And then ultimately, I think that's what third down is in the NFL. It's the quarterback down, and you compete for that first down. And um, you got to have total urgency and total focus. And I think you're going to see that, and then that's going to help him sustain drives. Sustaining drives is going to help him produce more points. Producing more points is going to help him give Kyle Shanahan more uh, and you know a greater eagerness to put him in there. And I think that's ultimately what it comes down to. Brock's got the advantage because of 33 points a game. That's his advantage. That's why he's the starter going in. But Trey, you know, 33 points a game also has a lot to do with McCaffrey. It's also has a lot to do with Debo and Kittle and Ayuk and you know what I'm saying? So, um, and Trey's got all those advantages as well. So now it's just a matter of getting your arms around it. I would love to know private. I'd love to talk to Jeff Christensen privately and ask him where exactly do you see improvement with Trey, where exactly did you have the biggest impact with Trey? Because when I watched Trey at OTAs and minicamp, you were there. What I saw was he really has a different, um, on the short throws, the screens, the slants, the short stuff. I feel like it's more of a wrist action than an arm action. Remember in his, when he was a rookie and he was in preseason and he was gunning those slants really hard and, the wide receivers were dropping the ball, but people were, were fairly saying, like, that's a very tough ball to catch. It's not a very catchable ball. I think his short throws are much more catchable now, and I think that's a big deal for him. He's never going to be completing more than 60% of his throws if he's gunning those short throws. So if he can just – I th I feel like his layups are actually a little bit more soft. There's a little bit more English on him. And I've always liked his deep throws. So we'll see how he does in the intermediate ones. But if I feel like that, to me, is the – Jeff Christensen effect right there. Yeah. I, I, I think what you, the, the way I would describe it uh, is um, there's been many times where I felt like one of the biggest negatives of Trey is that he's kind of one speeded. He's got one speed and it's all coming out hot. Um, and in reality, you know, a lot of this offense is within five yards of the line of scrimmage and it's really got to, your footwork's got to be right. And the ball's got to come out on time but it's got to come out as a catchable ball. I think he's been a little late uh, because of his mechanics on some of the short stuff, and he compensates by throwing it harder. And um, that's just not the best way to go about it. you got to be on time, and you got to throw with tempo and pace, and there's got to be, you know, 
the throws have to make sense. You're throwing a deep out, then rail it in there. But you're throwing a, you know, flat pass to a running back, and you got to layer it over a linebacker. You, it's not about hard how hard you throw it. It's you gotta you gotta take a little off. Um, you know, we the game that I I, I kept I, I watched again a couple of weeks ago was the Bear game, and he got criticized so heavily for oh he dramatically overthrew Tyler Croft. Tyler Croft never left the earth. He never jumped <laughs> Thank an you. inch. Thank you. He Thank you. He didn't jump. Thank you. At all. It was ridiculous. Why was Tyler throw. Croft on the team last year? Can- <laughs> It was what did it was, he ever do? It was, was as was much positive. on him. That was as much on him as anything. But Thank also you, the throw, it wasn't that it was so unbelievably high. It was just it was a little too hard and yeah. it wasn't lofted. And right. so you need a little more. I, he if, if he had lofted it, now he's got an extra second to jump. But because he didn't loft it, by the time he turned around, it was too late to jump. And the ball was beyond him. So it 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 was on Trey for not lofting the ball. But it looked worse because it, Croft never got even one inch off the ground. He was on on the ground the entire time. You know, if he's got thirty five inch vertical or thirty inch vertical, he catches that, and that's average. He he probably catches that ball easily, or he definitely gets a hand on it. Instead, it looked like a dramatic overthrow. It wasn't that dramatic of an over, overthrow. The tight end never. He just threw the wrong type of pass. He didn't loft it. He didn't put touch on it. He put too much speed on it. He made the receiver decide too quickly, and it was too much of a laser, and not he didn't loop it in there. So I mean, we're just talking about we're talking about nuances of throwing, and that's where Trey, with with not playing a ton, needs development. And I think if you ask Christensen, he'd probably tell you it's the array of different throws that Trey makes at different times. Now he's making the right throws in the right times. And I feel like when people who really back Brock or Jimmy argue about people who with people who back Trey and people who say that Trey's skill set transcends Brock or Jimmy. They'll say like, okay, yeah, sure. But like, can Trey hit the easy stuff? Because that's 87% of the offense. And if he can't do that, then who cares about the other throws that he can hit that the other quarterbacks can't. And that's a valid criticism, but I feel like what we're seeing, what I saw from him in those off season practices is a guy who's more equipped to hit the easy stuff. And I think everyone saw it two years ago in preseason. He was really throwing the slants too hard. There's a lot of slants in the offense, a lot of quick in-breaking routes. Can't throw them like that. And he needed to make that adjustment. And I think it's interesting that if he did make that adjustment and it sticks, that it was with a quarterback coach that the Niners didn't recommend. I mean, it wasn't their guy. It was a guy that, that Trey sort of found. I don't know how he found him. That's a good story. I'd love to know how in year three after he tried and failed with whoever the Niners recommended. That's a good story, too. The Niners always, like, back into their quarterback successes. It's like, we got Brock Purdy. With the last pick in the draft after Tariq Castro-Fields, we risked the Dolphins taking him so we could get Tariq Castro-Fields, but now we look like geniuses because we got him. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, um, anybody who does any kind of personnel would tell you, you need to be good, but you need to be lucky. And they, you know, I think I think they've got two good quarterbacks. One they drafted and are having all kinds of growing pains with because they want him to produce right away, and it hasn't been a direct line. But I kind of wonder if I don't really think the 49ers haven't said anything. It's all based on what they've done, right? Like we think that they're frustrated or impatient with Trey because of the presence of Darnold. But maybe we're reading that right, but maybe we're reading that wrong. Maybe that maybe Darnold is simply there because they walked out of the link in Philly that night going, I don't care what the situation is. We're getting multiple options at quarterback, and that's it. And it doesn't matter. It's not about, you know, so maybe we're reading it and people are reading it as, hey, you know what? They wouldn't have brought in Darnold if they really love Trey. Well, maybe it, maybe it's not about Trey. Maybe it's about. Um, they just want to make sure they don't get caught in a Josh Johnson situation where it's a big game and they don't have a backup who they think they can win with. Uh, I viewed it as I, I, I'll say this, Grant. I thought that when they when they went after Darnold so early that it was a definite statement of their lack of belief in Trey. But as time goes on, I'm kind of wondering if I got that wrong. I feel like going into that signing, we all knew that. 
quarterback was a huge need for the 49ers. And we were talking about which one were they going to sign. We were th- talking Mariota. Could, I mean, they picked a guy. They, they, they signed him on the first day of free agency. Yeah, I'm sure they like him, but we all knew they were going to do this. I, I, it happened, and then people acted like they were surprised and it meant something. I think it was actually predictable. And maybe it wasn't them picking him as much as he picked them. Yeah. I mean, that's Perhaps. possible. I will say this. I got the NFL Plus this offseason, and so I've been going through the 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 All-22 on Sam Darnold in Carolina, and I was totally underwhelmed when I watched all the All-22 from Sam Darnold at Carolina. He had some good moments, but he also has these, these just – hugely negative plays and we're talking about a guy who is a 2018 draft choice so i don't know what we're going to see from sam darnold and i'm i'm kind of my question would be is the plan to have trey compete with darnold and the loser is done with the nine the niners are done with the loser because the way it's set up is they keep telling us that brock's going to be the one they signed brandon allen to an absolute perfect third quarterback salary. He's going to make a million 80,000, which is, I went and looked at every third string quarterback in the league. They're all making basically exactly that. So is Brandon Allen going to be the third guy and Brock's going to be the first guy and it's Darnold and Trey competing for number two. And what happens to the loser of that competition, which I think is going to be Darnold. Um, Is that guy, does that mean Darnold's going to green Bay? Like was rumored, what, 10 days ago or so that you had the cut down. Um, It seems unlikely because he's so they're talking about him in such glowing terms and they seem like they love him so much. But um, if you made me predict how the quarterback room is going to go, I'll say Purdy gets the start and is ready week one. Trey beats out Darnold for number two and Darnold gets dealt and Brandon Allen is the number three. 